Hi, everyone, and welcome to orientation for the FLEX courses. Now, the course I'm going to be showing you is environmental science, but this applies to any of the FLEX book-based courses, which include Earth Science, Life Science 7, and Physical Science 8. So even though it says Earth Science, this also applies to your classes, or environmental science, it also applies to your classes as well, even if you're not in environmental science because they're all set up exactly the same way. So let me show you real briefly around the class. First of all, right up here, we have my name and information to contact me. Keep in mind that I work in Mountain Time, not in Pacific, so if you're in Pacific, please subtract an hour. The news forum, which is down below my welcome, is for general information that I'm going to send out to individual students, and that can be Hi, I'm going to be out of town, or we might not have office hours because of testing or whatever. Class, if you'll see here that all of the toggles are closed, um, and that's automatic, you can open each one individually or open all by clicking the open all button. In the class resources toggle, you have three individual parts. You've got a link to the course syllabus, which will take you directly to a live link, and here's what that looks like. And so here's a co course syllabus. If I have to make corrections to the course syllabus for whatever reason, I can do that right here, and you'll see the most updated copy that way. We're going to click on the back button. The class policies is just on general things about late assignments and, um, you know, plagiarism. That's an important part of it. Make sure you don't plagiarize your stuff. I mean, come on, boys and girls, you know this. And then there's a link to the online textbook, which is a Google Docs folder. And I'm going to sign in. And so it's going to look a little different because it's my folder. Uh, so it'll give me the option of editing and stuff. But just as a quick overview, you can see here that there's each chapter is listed individually, as well as the cover and the table of contents. And that's to make it easier for you to download onto your device, whether you're using an Apple iPad or whether you're using a computer. Keep in mind, though, that some of the activities that I have based in this course cannot be accessed by an iPad, especially the fun activities, because they use Shockwave Flash, which is not used, but it's not compatible with iPads. But if you do have an iPad, you can download the EPUB version, which is the textbook, which will download it directly onto your iPad, and it will be iPad compatible. PDFs are always iPad compatible, and if you have the bandwidth to download the whole book, then I highly recommend you download either the EPAD or the PDF. Remember, PDF works on any device whatsoever. So that's our textbook, and it will consistently re re refer you back to this section. So as we go in, that's the three, um, the three components in the class resources tab. The office hours is simply a link out to where we can conference, and it's using a program called BlueJeans. If you're choosing to do the office hours with me and you've not done a BlueJeans meeting before, you may want to access it the first time 10 minutes prior to the beginning of the session so that you can download any drivers that you may need for your device. BlueJeans also works on iPad, by the way, but you may need to download the BlueJeans app. Um, so this will just take you out to the link, and office hours for science help are from 2 to 3 Mountain on Wednesdays. Now, that being said, in chemistry classes, it's a little bit different, but I'll cover that in a different orientation. As you can see now, we have four weeks available to you. I will open each month as a set of four weeks generally during the third week of the previous month. So sometime during September 16th through the 22nd, I will then open October. This is to keep it from being visually overwhelming so that it's just not, you know, this horrible cycle of, oh my gosh, look how many tabs I have. Um, and this, this, this is to help you. But each of these weeks are scheduled out exactly the same. The first section tells you what what to read. And if you see here, the online textbook is also hyperlinked. That'll take you back to that online textbook so that you don't have to go to the course resources tab if you don't want to. Then there's a things to do section and a fun stuff section. In the things to do, this one's there's two videos to watch, one on the scientific method and how to write scientific questions in this case. Um, 
there may be a lectures section depending on which class you're in. So it'll may say lectures to watch, and that's actually a separate section. Um, and then the things to do would be different. If you see here, this icon right here means it's a discussion board, and it says to introduce yourself. So we're going to look at that and make sure that you do each part of the discussion board. So it says click add a question link um, and start your post. Please introduce yourself. Tell us a little about your interests and hobbies. Make a statement about what you would like to learn during the environmental science course. Don't forget to respond to at least three other students' posts with comments that are positive. Add something interesting to the discussion and ask a question that would be nice to know. That's called the PIN method. Um, remember that in discussion boards, and there's one every two weeks or thereabouts, in discussion boards, you are graded on based on your first post and how you respond. If you just bang it out on one day and you respond to three other kids and you haven't actually interacted with any of them, you're going to get a lower score because remember, you're asking kids questions on what something that would be nice to know. So if they're not responding to your questions or you're not responding to their questions, what point is it? It's no longer a discussion. It's now what the Internet commonly refers to as trolling. That's hardly useful. So make sure that you're touching the discussion boards multiple times over the two weeks in which it's assigned. Um, it's a pet peeve, but it's also something that you need to be aware of because that doesn't make it a discussion if you're just going to vomit what you're going to say and then not actually respond or answer anybody else's questions because that's just not polite. Okay, so um, there's your discussion. Um, here's an activity, and in the instructions for the activity, you have a link to the instructions. So um, it says complete the assignment, the mystery of lightning. After you've done your research, turn in your paper. So when you click on that one, it's hyperlinked out to a document and it has a whole bunch of instructions. And here's the three questions that you're going to answer in this question in this case and then do the extension investigation. The resources cited um, on these what are called real world applications are just simply a way for you to have jumping off points. OK, um, and so often there's a video or something to look at and then you're answering questions that relate to it. And so that's all you're going to do. And then you click the add submission book or add submission link, just like you would when you did Moodle orientation. Finally, the fun stuff section is just silly review games or activities or uh, fun ways to remember the different things we've covered that week. So there's always a fun stuff. There's always the things to do. Make sure that you're getting all the things to do done. Even the ones that just say watch and they're just links out to the web, make sure you watch them because it's going to help you throughout the course. Don't skip them. As you can see, I'm not overwhelming you on the amount of stuff that you're reading. In the second week after every discussion board, there's always a reminder, don't forget to enter, you know, don't forget to finish up the discussion board this week. And then as you can see, there's there's four activities here. One of them's a watch, so it's not anything you're, you're doing. Um, so they take different forms. Some of them are writing assignments. Some of them are labs. It varies. Um, and then there's a wild taxi driving game. That's a review. Um, and those are the kinds of things that we do. So that kind of gives you an idea of the different kinds of things that we do in each section. And this applies to all Flexbooks. They're all set up exactly the same. Uh, the activities are different, but anything that has the hand in icon, remember that the instructions are actually located inside the little brief overview of the instructions. And so you just click on that, takes you over to the instructions. And for you, you're only going to have the option to download a copy. OK, and it'll give it down to, down here. So make sure that you download a copy for yourself and then save it in your files and then upload your finished product. A good hint of uh, suggestion for some students who forget what they've done and what they haven't, a really good thing to do is to change the name of your document once you've finished it and actually put the word done or finished or something like that. That's a mental cue for you saying that, yes, you finished it and you know where to go from here, that it's ready to submit. Because very often students will only submit 
uh, and then they submit a half finished thing because they picked it up and put it down and then picked it up again and then forgot to save before they submitted. So that's a really good habit to get into is to just put like a dash and then the word done at the end of your title for the document. And that will help you to remember to do that. So again, make sure that you go through week by week in each course. Make sure you've downloaded the um, textbook in whatever form you choose at, choose in whatever format and however big a size chunk you want to use. So make sure you've done those and make sure that you attend office hours for any questions and I will be more than happy to help you. So I hope you have a great day and I'm looking forward to working with you guys this year.